All right, so today is the 3rd of February. This is the DevSync. Maybe the audio will, will record this time. Um, let's see, okay, Chris has our backlog up. Um, let's go ahead, oh, we need to, uh... all right, great. Yes, okay. Um, let's go ahead and, and review Sprint 19 here then. Go ahead and start with Chris then. Okay, uh, so I got the testing done on and yeah, had some and did some changes to tests for um, getting the Pantacore device ID using our pairing code. <clears throat> that all is working now. So I've moved on to um, retrieving uh, the device information and being able to, and, and then the software endpoints and then uh, there's three other endpoints I got to I got to implement um, for changing whether your auto update setting, your SSH key, and um, something else. So yeah, yeah that's that's what I'm moving on to next. Is it'll all, all probably go in the same Selenium endpoint because it'll all going to be on that device edit screen. So um, so yeah, that's where I'm going next. Okay, uh, sounds good. Um, in terms of timeline, uh, how do you feel about uh, wrapping uh, that work up by Friday? It'll be tight. Um, I could probably get the, the API stuff done, but um, linking it, linking it up to uh, to the UI, that last step of um, you know getting it all working together, that may be it'll be it'll be close. Okay. Um, all right. Because uh, yeah, I mean you know it, it, it takes as long as it takes, but I uh, I want to I want to get this done so that we can move on to bug fixing because we've we've been spending a lot of time talking about bugs, which is great because you know we're all on the same system now. Um, but I, I am anxious to actually start addressing those directly. Yeah, it's possible it may take another day or two after the sprint, but um, it's hard hard to tell right now. Okay, great. Um, who's next, Derek? Yeah. Okay, so I've been mostly working on my revisions to the SJ240. Um, I think I mentioned yesterday I was going to, um, as I'm making these revisions, I'm printing parts. And so should I have another um, device ready to, to distribute. So i um, hoping that by definitely by the end of the week. Um, and so I also started doing a little bit more testing. So I've got this, uh, Josh and I are kind of working on it together a certain, to a certain degree, but this, this stress test um, idea. Um, and so I was, you know, playing some music on it for a prolonged period of time to see how that affected things in it. And I was getting the, um, the thermostat icon popping up a lot on, you know, that the Raspberry Pi is is hot. Of course, we're not running the fan right now, so hopefully that alleviates that. Um, so where are we at on the, the fan stuff? Is somebody actively, was Kevin working on that? Uh, yeah, Kevin has something for that, uh, but we haven't packaged it into um, uh, something that I think we've, you know, we, where we've exposed it to Ken so that he can actually write, you know, that level. Um, I'll, yeah. I will get with Ken, uh, Kevin um, later today and uh, and figure that out. Okay, so I'm just going to put a pin on that until we have the fan working because um, I guess what I can say is I think we, we need to have a fan <laughs> um, Good thing we if we're going to listen to music for prolonged periods of time. Um, it doesn't seem to be an issue if you're not listening to music. So Josh and I talked about maybe maybe it's the amp that's contributing to the heat as well. Um, so getting a heat sink on the amp might help. Um, yeah, first but, step is yeah. to turn on the fan that we already have, though. So yeah, might as well get the fan going. So I'm just gonna get uh, wait on that until we got the fan working. Right. Um, but out of that, I did uh, talk to to um, Ake a little bit about the YouTube skill and um, 
when the time comes, you know, he wants to collaborate on us, with, collaborate with us on getting that up to uh, where we want it to be. Great. So, uh, yeah, he, he, in his words, he said it was, it was kind of a proof of concept um, when Spotify shut down our, mm. our access. So we put, you know, so it needs some work before. But I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Cool. Um, let's see. Oh, the uh, guys and I reviewed the postcards last night. Uh, I'm going to send them to you, Michael, for one last check, and then I think uh, I'm ready to print them. Okay. Um, it does. So the way the way we talked about it yesterday, it is two separate cards, one for the enhanced kit and one for the regular kit, which I don't think we have separated as a bomb um, different in the bomb yet. But I have two bombs. Objection one to that. I, I made a bomb for each one. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, mean, the, I did make a separate the card. The card is different. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, you can make different bombs for those. Okay. Or uh, um, part numbers for them. Yeah, it's Sorry. certainly possible to combine them, but I think it makes sense to just have them be separate. It's not expensive to print. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, all right, great. Let's see. Go to Ken. Yeah, so I've had an incredibly frustrating, unproductive day. I've been working on syncing up the volume between the three points of interest, the screen GUI volume, I'll call it, the volume skill, and the buttons. And um, so, yeah, the, the problem is the skill we have doesn't really work with what we've got because it wasn't designed to. Uh, I haven't been able to see the Mark 1 skill because I'm not really sure how to go and view what the latest skill deployed on the Mark 1 was, but I suspect that it was intimately tied with the um, Andrino or Arduino code, and uh, I'm not sure how that communication was being facilitated. Um, so I'm going to have to modify the Blue System skill. I'm going to have to uh, modify the enclosure. And I'm pretty sure the blue system skill is what's ultimately driving the GUI. But then I have to tie the actual volume skill in with all of those guys as well. Uh, what I can tell you is if I change the volume using the GUI, that I believe that's being controlled by the blue system skill. And I believe he's sending out the appropriate uh, volume messages on the bus that are being picked up. So if I use the volume control on the screen, it will change the volume accordingly. But if I change it with anything else, it won't be reflected on the GUI. Uh, and I actually updated the ticket so you could see this, the, the conditions and what's getting updated and what's not. But once I get a working image tomorrow, I should be able to be productive and not frustrated and probably have all of this working, if not by end of day tomorrow, early Friday. It's not that big a deal. It's just a matter of getting on it and not being locked out of my device. Um, I'm not going to commit any bugs because it doesn't sound like anybody else is having the problems I'm having. But um, yeah, I'm not real happy with the way that this thing rebooted. And it's a little bit scary that I woke up and it was kind of dead in the water. It was consuming 60, 70% of the CPUs, 90% of the memory, and just not working. Um, you would say, hey, Mycroft, and two three four five beep you know what i mean mm -hmm. and um anything you did like what time is it it'd be like 20 seconds later it'd come back and say oh it's this time and then the screen was acting weird because the you know the dimming and the idle or the timeouts were getting hit and it was getting confused so i'm going to just chalk that up to a bad day at the office uh, what we call in florida tropical depression and I'll assume that it's going to magically go away with the next build. Um, there is a concern that the soft keyboard is, sorry, Gez, configured for American British and not American English, but, <laughs> or, or British English and not American English. But uh, that's a minor nit, so I won't bother posting a bug if we're all comfortable with using a brick keyboard. And um, yeah, we'll see. If these, if these things persist, though, I will, uh, on the next build, submit some... Uh, some bugs. So that's that's 
my status. Sorry, no good news today. <laughs> on the volume. Can I, can I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the volume front, can we? I think when we talked in, in our in our summit that <clears throat> all the volume specific clicks platform specific stuff for the volume should be in the enclosure or the hall or whatever. And the only thing the volume skill should be doing is taking in intent and make pushing a, a bus message that the right hall will get to. So I'm a little concerned about putting like volume code in the Mark II skill and the volume skill and the, you know, is there a way we can move towards that? Well, I was going to say that there, there is only, there's one volume skill. So the Mark I and Pycroft and every, every platform, they all use the same volume skill so there's only one volume skill we've removed all the volume code i think from from the mark two skill already um no okay i'll double check that but i'm pretty sure it's all being driven from the enclosure who responds to the gui volume slider uh i thought that we'd moved all that to the enclosure no the, the gui is completely in the blue system skill no, well, no, the 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 pull down menu that's not that's not in the skill at all. That's in the the Microsoft GUI Mark II package. Microsoft GUI Mark II package. Where is that? Is that the C plus plus code? Yeah, yeah. Well, it would so, be helpful if somebody could point me to that so that I don't spend too much time looking for something I'm not going to find. Could you? Well, and I wouldn't if it if it's um if it's if the the skill if like if the voice interaction and the buttons are, are all synced up um and all that we're trying to do all that we have left is is getting the, the slider the on-screen slider synced up then i think we can ask blue systems to to pick that up rather oh, than spending your time on it that would make my life immensely simpler but i don't think it's going to be that simple but um okay. yeah because Think about it. Um, that that code is interacting with the blue system skill via message bus messages, right? So how are you going to eradicate that whole loop? It's not interacting. I'm fairly sure that it's not interacting with the blue system skill. I, and I by the blue system that. skill, like, like when we say blue system skill, we mean the Mark II skill, right? Yeah, Mark II, whatever. Not the one that, that Chris V did. The blue systems Mark II skill because if I slide the volume, I can see the Mark II skill sending out the volume adjustment messages on the bus, which is why I said the slider will control the volume because those messages are picked up by my enclosure code. Okay, I'll have to go check that. Anyway, I will focus on the first part of what you just said, and then I will pester you tomorrow for the GUI blue systems interaction piece of it. I will get the buttons. Well, let me put it a different way. I'm done. <laughs> the buttons and the volume skill work as they're expected to in conjunction with each other. If you go and tell um, the Mark II to change the volume, well, I, I take that back. There's some gaps there, but I can, button that up pretty quick. The big Megillah for me is the interaction with the screen and that volume control piece. In other words, I don't, I don't have them perfectly in sync. Like if I tell the volume skill, if I say set the volume to 35% or whatever, the volume will get set to 35%. If I ask them what the volume set to, it'll tell me 35%. The only faux pas there is if I go behind the scenes and change the volume with the buttons, it's not sending a message out the bus to the bot so that the volume skill can pick it up and adjust. And I'm not sure if I want to do that or if I want to have modify the volume skill to query it via the message bus before it reports the value. But that's of little concern to me. I can button that up once I get logged back in this booger in an hour. What I'm concerned about is the interactions with the screen. And that's just totally foreign to me. And I spent significant time looking for that code and couldn't find it. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm not, and it makes sense. The Mark I didn't have that skill to interact with. So I just don't know. So I will get back with you first thing in the morning on that once I have this working. 
and we can re reinvestigate that. Does that yeah, sound like I, a plan? I, I, I agree with Gez's plan. You know, get as far as you can with what you've got and then throw a ticket for Blue Systems to fix up the GUI part. Will do. And I think in order to be fair to Blue Systems, I'll send the message out the bus when the buttons change the volume so that they have a half a chance of adjusting without having to get too closely tied to core. Can we um, document somewhere what parts of the GUI are controlled by the GUI um, C++ code and what parts are not? Um, I think that would help when we're looking for, you know, certain things like- Define we. What? Define we. I certainly couldn't provide that document. Yeah, so I'm just wondering- to pull down the menu. The pull down menu is, is the mark, mark to um, GUI, the, the Microsoft GUI Mark II package. Um, it, you know, there should, should, be, should be a link to it anyway, just so I can, you know, for grins, I can look at it. But I'll do what Michael said. I'll get it working with the buttons and the volume skill, and I'll file a ticket, and I'll try to get something in there so that they have a half a chance of resolving it without too much work. Yeah. Yeah. They should just be able to follow whatever you do in the volume skill, right? What's that? Yeah. They should be able to just follow whatever you've done, whatever you, whatever changes you make in the volume skill. They should be able to do the same thing, the equivalent thing, in the in the pull down menu. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. My my point is that there's stuff happening in the GUI that happens within the C plus plus repo, and there's stuff that happens within skills and core. If we could know which is where and why, that would be awesome. Agreed. <laughs> Anyway, that's my status update for today. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah, uh, Chris, I think that's a great thing. We That sounds like another ticket we should put up there for Blue Systems to answer if they can. Um, all right. Um, I, uh, no update from Kevin. Uh, I chatted with them uh, via text earlier today. We're going to get together this afternoon and uh, get an update then. Um. Yes? Oh, um, I spent way too much time yesterday responding to, well, not too much time. I spent a lot of time yesterday responding to uh, community comments and, and questions and stuff around the, the Mark II update and, and shipping uh, address details and, and all that sort of stuff so not a lot to report from me um uh we are however um i did add that that last ticket in in progress for me to um so we can get a a better system of tracking what's um what what we're doing with the blue system team and um and where we're at and um what they're working on and what they're waiting on us for and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, probably going to stick that in the micro GUI Mark II repo that we were just talking about. Um, since it's all about the Mark II at the moment. Gaz, where is the Art Reno code contained for the Mark I? Uh, I will, I can go find that. <laughs> no, I, I, no, no, I'm just saying, I think Things like the, the Arduino repository for posterity's sake, so we can look at how things used to be done, uh, link to the Blue Systems uh, GUI code, uh, stuff like that. I don't know that we, we need to act on it, but just having it somewhere for informational purposes, if, if nowhere else, a, uh, an Atlassian uh, wiki page, uh, just so that people have the opportunity to you know say, oh, I need to look at the Arduino code to see what it's doing, here it is. Oh, I'm wondering what that GUI is, or that screen is, what's driving the screen. Here's the code. Um, you know, it's okay that we don't know it, but it would be nice to have links to it. I think a lot of the Arduino code um, is in four and skills. Well, there's there's definitely some of it in skills, but a lot of it is being done um, elsewhere, I've noticed. And I'm talking about the actual code that runs on the Arduino as well. 
not just the interface. Yeah, yeah, there's a specific repo for that. Um, enclosure dash mark one is what it is. Yeah, so if we can just capture that in an Atlassian page, that would be awesome. I mean, we've talked we've talked about. Um, I think that comes in in the whole like cleaning up GitHub and and you know understand having a directory of exactly what's there and and um, fixing up the the naming conventions on things and like all that sort of stuff. So I mean, I can I can start to document stuff. I'll probably if I if I do that, I'd do it in the public documentation so that you know other community members can also find that. Um, yeah, I don't know that we need anything elaborate. Uh, I'm just asking for those two particular pieces because they relate to work I'm doing. But I would imagine that it might relate to some additional work as well as we get into more detailed stuff. But I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying at least those two would be helpful. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, Gez, um, I added a <laughs> ticket for you. Thanks. You're welcome. Is it in uh, the sprint? Uh, 597. Um, add okay. build date and version number to the home screen. Oh. Um, this has come up enough times. Uh, it seems to come up you know, every day or almost every other day. Um, uh, I think it'd be great to know which version we're running on. Uh, and maybe even which yeah. channel and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's cool. So, so the home screen of the, the Mark II? Yeah, where it just says, you know, right now it's telling me it's 301 Wednesday, February 3rd, you know, and then like in a little tiny font at the bottom, it could just say, you know, 2021.02.03, you know, oh. 42 a.m. or whatever, whenever it got built, you know. Um, while we're, while we're debbing, I see. Yeah, like yeah exactly. February, yeah. I mean, it could be somewhere permanent up in the, the top. The it could, but then he has menu. to get into the pull down menu and all that kind of junk, right? I'm just, I'm thinking something, yeah. you know, relatively quick and dirty. We still have to define, you know, what the version numbers mean, but a build date I think is unambiguous. Um, and, uh, you know, and I also suggested in the ticket itself, like maybe even putting in like the, uh, the git, um, uh, the hash number so that you actually, mm. you know, you can say, oh, this cool. is exactly what the, you know, code I'm using is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was uh, something I, I, I put on your plate for you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got. Um... <laughs> All right. Um, was that was that all for you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We can skip me. I've been working on biz dev stuff that I can't talk about, unfortunately, for regulatory reasons. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, seems like maybe a little bit of a rough day, but uh, we'll, um, you know. It looks like we're on track to maybe wrap this up by Friday or maybe Monday. So let's do that and uh, and then get to griping and moaning about uh, all the bugs that we have and, and get to fixing them. So that'll be my favorite. That's my favorite sprint. Yeah, like they say, Michael, they can't all be gold, right? <laughs> I take it. I take it. Everybody's weathering the polar vortex better than myself. It's been freezing down here. It's. I don't know. It's pretty cold. It's 55 here. It's like that's a seasonally warm for me in this time of year. That's probably <laughs> warmer than it is down here. <laughs> yeah, just wait till this weekend, though. It's going to be like yeah, really freaking cold. This weekend, it's going to get negative, I think. Mm, fun. I like your sweater, Chris. That's right, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm chiefing up for the rest of from now until the Super Bowl. Let's see <laughs> if you're wearing it again on Monday. <laughs> I will still wear it with pride. When your buddy Tom Brady has a has his uh, way with uh, KC. <laughs> I hope not. We beat him earlier this year. Hopefully, we can beat him again in the Super Bowl. All right. Uh, any other uh, topics people want to bring up while we're here? No. Um, um, I wanted a bug. I want to put in people's ears. 
and I just thought of it now because I'm I'm doing testing. Um, the code cove um, tool that we're using for the core unit tests also can be supported um, with the behavioral tests that we run. Oh, and very nice. You run it through coverage uh, through a coverage utility. So I'm wondering if maybe it would be a good idea to, and this could be a longer term thing. We don't do it right now, <laughs> um, but uh, to you know put get all of our code code coverages for all of our repos in one place. Maybe this this code cover I/O place, and you could just flip between the repos and check the code coverage and, and that kind Are of. Are you stuff. saying that we can get code coverage numbers for BK tests? <laughs> yeah, that's we wonderful. We already do in the. Um, with the Allure reports, but those just aren't working the way I would hope they were. So I'm, I'm hoping this would be a, a better solution to code coverage. Yeah, because um, I'm not a big, I don't care about code coverage for unit tests, but for system integration tests, it's huge. So that would be that would be a big win. Yeah, so I, I, I looked into it a little bit today. I didn't really do any work. I just wanted to see if it was possible. And I think it is um, from what I've read. So, um, yeah, I don't know where we want to prioritize that or if it's even a priority, but um, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, How go ahead run? and put, put a ticket in there for uh, for the VK, uh, for the next yeah. VK um, sprint anyway. Well, not just the VK stuff, but like the, the Salini stuff is all behavior tests, it's all the tests I've been oh. writing. Yeah. So that's, and that's kind of where I was going with that is, you know, it's if we, just not just core, we can we could use this for, we could use it for any, you know, any of our other repos that have any sort of testing. That would be awesome yeah. if we could have like a uh, some sort of uh, like th you know barometer that says uh, you know last week we had 20% VK code coverage and this week we got 40 and you know six months down the road we have 80. That would be awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, already. Totally okay. Uh, it sounded like Derek maybe had something. Oh uh, yeah. If you got a second after we stop, um, I do want to ask you maybe about one of those things for. Okay. You cannot speak up for regulatory reasons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll call it there then. Thanks, everyone. All right.